It is good to consider other chain thrift stores that are available across country. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So this St. Vincent de Paul definitely is more of a true thrift store. It's a lot of clothes, some basic housewares. Some St. Vincent's get a lot of old stuff. This one, so far, I've only found one or two pieces. This fondue pot is cute. It's only $2.50, but I'm not sure. Hmm. So this is the ring. But where's the lid? It looks like it got used a lot, and I don't see a lid in there. So unfortunately, that's going to have to stay. I did get one cute little tile and some practical stuff for the house because, you know, one good thing about thrifting is it is a lifestyle. It's not just about old stuff. I buy used goods that I can use and I needed an egg steamer. So for $2, I got one. But that's about it. I don't think we're going to find a whole lot more at this particular St. Vincent, but it is good to consider other chain thrift stores that are available across country because a lot of people are complaining about Goodwill's prices are going up. I mean, I personally am actually finding more things there than I've found in the recent past, but people are complaining about uh, some of the things they don't like about Goodwill. Well, there are other chain thrift stores that exist in a lot of towns. Habitat for Humanity, St. Vincent de Paul, Savers or Value Village in a lot of places. This set is $3.50. It's marked Oxford, Brazil. That would be 1990s. So still not wildly old. I don't really see a lot of wildly old things in this area either. So I think I'm going to just take my few bits and go on to the next store. Well, that's the thing. And that's part of what I was just saying about this is that, you know, you come here, I mean, like these are, you know, they're just little Falls Graff Yorktown yeah. bowls, but they're a quarter a piece. I mean, this is how thrift stores yeah, used to price things. Uh huh. Yeah, that looks like it might yeah, be well, pretty good. Misty. And Lamp lady. Oh, I yeah. To to myself too. Oh, uh, well, you know, we all share information. I love yeah. it. I've learned something from every single person in this yeah. uh, community, and it's just great. I just really enjoy it. So, you go to the uh, Salvation Army up on Washington? No, but I think that might be on my list today, too. I'm going to yeah. go around Henderson and That's just see what you all have. And oh, the good. Re the restore. I just went there. Weren't they nice? Last week, they had a load of stuff for 50 cents a piece. Wow. A, a resale shop that went out of business. Oh, interesting. Well, that was really fun. Uh, that was Sue. She's a viewer. She sells at a vendor small that I hope to get to here in town today. And I ran into her at St. Vincent de Awe, which in reality is St. Vincent de Paul. And St. Vincent de Paul is a nice thing to know about if you're looking for chain thrift stores that might be in towns anywhere in the United States. There is a possibility in a larger town that you're going to have a St. Vincent de Paul. And sometimes they turn up some stuff. I like the old Spring Mountain water sign on this building. So the ReStore is right by this old grocery and vegetable produce building. And they are open every day except Sunday. Set of six Limoges snack plates here, but you'd have to find the cups. They're older than they look though. This over here is really cool. This is an old butcher shop scale now. They've got 225 on it, which honestly is about what it's really worth, but it's got the old county auditor's seal, which means the last time it was checked for tax purposes was 1965, and to make sure that it was balanced in the correct way. This little panel, which I'm sure if you turn that knob stays up, will show you what the interior look like, and then you've got the scale there. It's really neat. I sat with one of these on my driver's seat all the way from Colorado back to Washington once 
and I had to strap it in with the seat belt to get it there safely. This drop front secretary desk is a nice project piece because it's only $39 and it is solid wood from probably 1940. It's had a few adjustments over time. These hinges are new. They're certainly substantial enough. The burl is fine and could be polished or you could actually do something with it since the handles have to be replaced. If you wanted to restyle this, you could. Nice leather top desk with the inserts here. This one looks like it's also 20th century, missing one handle. It's a Drexel and it's probably 1970s, I'm guessing, from that mark. Maybe even 80s, but it's only $69. Remember a year ago when everybody was buying desks like crazy? Here's some Evesham Veil vale by Royal Worcester. And this is Crown Ducal Wear Atlanta pattern. I understand that they had a big shipment come in about a week ago from some sort of an old store that had closed. This is kind of a cute thing, the way that somebody did it. I mean, it's actually been painted a long time ago, you can tell. This is not a recent repaint. It is over mahogany veneer, I'm sure, or walnut. But somebody, instead of buying letters, they, in very nice script, wrote Shakespeare on the top of it. So isn't that sweet the way that's done? And that is $49. So this is a good place to get furniture. All right, well, they were very nice here and I wanted to show the shirt because it definitely says what uh, all of us in this, uh, there we go. Just because it's used doesn't mean it's useless. Restore Habitat for Humanity. So come help them out because they're helping a lot of people out and I love that ethos. Ah, the trifecta. We are now at a goodwill, so we just need Salvation Army and we'll have four of the main coast-to-coast -coast thrift stores under our belt today. Color of the week is red while supplies last. I don't see any vintage jewelry. Well, the furniture seems to have gone to Habitat for Humanity because there's very little furniture in here. The only way this would be worth $35 at a thrift store is if it's a 16 millimeter of a certain type and it mm, does not appear to be one of the more valuable ones. So I would not want to bother with the shipping. You might be able to double your money on that, but too much effort. Oh, I like the uncandles, yeah. <laughs> the Oak Ridge Boys. There's a beard. Check that out. Who's the guy on the right? It's like one of those things is not like the other. And in here we have, oh, the first family. This was a parody of the Kennedys done in 1962. It was very popular at the time. Oh, Kate Smith. My grandfather loved Kate Smith. Person. Yes. Ah, yes. Well, that doesn't include the very racist song that she sang in the 30s that they've kind of buried and forgotten because she's America's sweetheart now. The Kingsman on Wand Records, but that doesn't have a sleeve and it's pretty worn. Oh, yes. We see lots of Guy Lombardo in these collections that are coming out of 1960s era estates. The check wagon gang. What's she gonna do with that wheat? Same lampshade we got for a dollar at St. Vincent's is two fifty nine at Goodwill. How do you feel about that? How do I feel? <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not getting it. Well, there you go. <laughs> All the good stuff is still back there. There's just really nothing old or particularly interesting here. And this is the thing that we're seeing with a lot of Goodwills now. I have to admit the other two stores, they might not have been bigger, but in their categories, they were better. For yes, and what does it say handmade there? Quality. Handmade quality. And what does it say on the bottom? Anything? Bottom. Yeah, I think this is... I don't know how to stick it. Yeah, this is pretty recent production. Oh, yeah. 
Zeno is pointing out that this is the only thing with any sort of age or cuteness in the place. And I mean, these are things that sell for three and five dollars a piece, unless you are doing something specific in a certain area or it's a particular maker. Mississippi State University. Okay, here we go. We found Florida. So maybe we have one that we can actually buy for resale because it's got the old municipal pier in St. Petersburg, so that's before 1973. It's got Cypress Gardens, which isn't there anymore, and it has flamingos on it. It was done for David Van in Miami Beach. So, okay, we might have found something. Mississippi State College for Women. Delaware, I have family there, but I don't think they'd be interested. And then this looks like it might be by Lennox. <laughs> nope, Celeste. I'm far off on that one. And then a few service plates here. This is an old Noritake from the 1930s. It's not that there might be money in some of these individual pieces. I just don't want to fool with it rather stick to sets of things. It's easier to sell one thing and pack it. So I think this is our big purchase. Uh, red Hat Lady fabric. We are looking for something vintage in linen. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it says since 1984, which means it's not very old. Hello Kitty in fleece, also not very old. Just hoping that Goodwill will turn up something with some age. This has a horse on it. Let's see what this is about. Oh my. Here we go. This could be something, even though it's in fleece. I have seen these by Pendleton. And you think, oh no, they wouldn't make anything of that quality like that. But actually, yes, I have seen that. This one, however, is polyester made for the St. Labre Indian School especially for you from the children at St. LeBray Indian School. Now, St. LeBray Indian School in the 70s sent around plastic salt and pepper shakers that had little totemic figures carved in the side. You see those all over the place, and then you were supposed to send them money. They're in Ashland, Montana, but this is 100% polyester and 100% made in China. So how is this especially for me from the children at the school? This is a little bit silly. There's another minion here. I'm beginning to think these are like chrome penguin ice buckets that you see them everywhere. Well, our goal on this trip is to try to find at least one old thing in each place that we can buy and resell for a profit. It feels like a stretch, but old videotape that has not been used is starting to sell. And I did find the plate, but the only other thing to buy here, it looks like, might be this of all funny things. Hmm. Goodwill really is not the treasure trove it used to be. I'm thinking this might have been an old gas station. That would be my guess from the 20s. Simon's Shoes has been there since 1919. I love that old sign. This is downtown Henderson, Kentucky, which is a thriving suburb of Evansville, Indiana, but actually has import of its own. Audubon actually did his initial field studies here. Behind me is the elm. I got a really good chrome shelf here once, but I haven't been here in a while, and Zeno was just saying it looks really different. It's collectibles and consignments and custom creations. I'm not sure what that means right now, so we'll have to go in and see. Well, this place has cleaned up a lot since the last time I saw it, to be truthful. It looks really a lot different, and they're doing a lot of remodeling, but they've got some cool old Sterling beer crates here. These are pretty collectible because this is made right here in Evansville. I think that's an ice cream cone or a hat <laughs> for a cookie jar. I, I don't know what that's about. Well, it depends how you look at it, I guess. $200,000 Louisiana Derby at the fairgrounds. I have never seen these before. What is this? Oh, a blue geese. And is it a Kentucky company? I can't tell. No mark on the bottom. $20. Hmm. Because she has a bandana. Yeah, she's more of a rube.
Uh, that's racist. This is a nice East Lake dresser, priced at $350 on sale. Pretty green lamp, but that's not for sale. They've got all the china in one room now. Yeah, this place really has changed a lot. They've got a pattern here I really like called Metlock's Navajo. They're asking $100 for 24 pieces, it appears. And, you know, that's probably a fair enough price because they do have a couple of serving bowls. The dinner plates seem to be in good shape. This was done, I believe, in 1962, but it's definitely early 60s, and it's definitely a modernist-approved style along the lines of Franciscan Starburst or some of those fun patterns. Metlocks did, of course, Mobile and Contemporary and some good patterns of their own. Bountiful floral dishes. These are fun. This is the store that a lot of this stuff went to Habitat Restore from recently. Interesting. They are definitely clearing this, cleaning this up. This is Franciscan's Fine China line. They did Fine China for a while in the 1960s and 70s. This is the Constantine pattern, 1967 to 76. And I have had a lot of fun over the year with the Red Wing Birds. I really like the shape of the picture. I wonder what the price on these are. These used to go for about 30 to 35 a piece. This is Clemenson's Pottery, their bird version. Clemenson's was known for a lot of California pottery novelty wear and it was hand-painted and then they did this hand-painted line of dinnerware towards the end of their production in the late 60s. 35 for the big serving bowl is probably about a retail price. They're actually asking 80 for all of the pieces. And while we're on the old china chase, this is a very pretty and earlier English set here, but that has a lot of stains. So we're going to leave that one behind. This is exactly the kind of American oak furniture from about 1900 we expect to find along the Ohio River. A lot of this was lost in the 1937 flood. This one is priced at $6.95. They want $75 for this set of gold 60s dresser wear, so... You know, it's changing. I like that unit there. Let's see how much that is. It looks like it's tea, probably veneered. Four ninety-five, not bad considering it's a big entertainment cabinet. And then this is Metlocks in the fruit pattern. This little guy here, Costa Boda, but priced at forty dollars. That is just really more money than I would want to spend. And hiding under here is an old Victrola with the open front. And then we've got this Chrome 1970s magazine rack. Now this I could probably sell. It's got the right look. It needs to be cleaned up. And who knows, it might be cheap, I'll ask. There's some Francoma up here too. Yeah. I like that little piece, but it's twelve ninety five again. There's just not really a lot of room in that, and then the wagon wheel has a chip on it, so I guess I'm out of luck there. Kind of a groovy phone here with the faux exotic skin. It's forty dollars. Seems like about the right price for that these days. Day fan control. And then we've got the old leaf clock by United up on the wall there. A couple of old religious prints in nice frames. Bondex cement paint, that is $35. And that might not be a bad price for an old galvanized advertising piece. We see these old fans that expand a lot that were done in the 60s and 70s in brass, but this one has some sort of a Asian looking figure on it. So that's a little bit different, but it's $175 and that is definitely full price. Now well, they have various old tins and things out of an old school, I think, or perhaps out of somebody's medicine chest. I'm not sure. This chalkboard crayon tin is neat, but for $7 it would have to be perfect, and it's not. Syrup of black draft, a pleasant tasting laxative. And then this one is a family laxative. Best to take one at night. Sounds like a short night. And I don't quite understand how it's a family laxative. Is everybody taking it? This is cute because it's got Life Boy on one side and then the two women talking about it on the other side. And then this is an old talcum tin, so we'll see how much these are. 
So they're dividing this up to do consignments, but they're all start, starting to take some artist related items. This is kind of neat the way they've painted this corner cabinet with the flowers. But I don't know whether the fate of this place will be to remain the kind of store that has old stuff or if the old stuff's going to eventually go away. We will have to come back later and find out. At least I found a few things to buy today. Nice color to this with the green. Monco presents Far Out. And how far out is it? Well, it has Barry Manilow, Neo Sedaka, Tony Orlando, Styx, Dave Loggins, Isaac Hayes, who we remember from South Park. I'm not sure how far out these people are. Seem pretty mainstream for the time. Evolution Records. That's a very 70s looking album cover. I don't remember Lighthouse as a band. So in this quiet and otherwise unassuming neighborhood, we have the Salvation Army Church, and next to it is the Salvation Army Thrift Store. So we will see what this is like. Well, they said the boutique items are 50% off. I'm not sure what constitutes a boutique item, but I'm going to look over here first at housewares. Early American Press Class by Anchor Hawking from about 1960. This is another pattern you see all over the place. There are a few rare pieces, however, especially some of the oil lamps. Washington, D.C. Old Choo Choo Train. That's some old American pottery, but nothing of significance. My grandmother had this Avon. Some of these little figures, if they're ceramic, can be a pretty well-known maker, but then there's a whole bunch made in China like these that came out shortly thereafter. Oh yeah, always actually look to make sure the disc is what you think it is, and also that they might not have put something in there that's better or worse. This looks right out of the 1980s to me. Let's take a look at it just for fun. Mikasa Continental. Indeed, right out of the 80s. Mikasa was very popular in the 1980s. Japanese production became considered of as good quality as American, and a lot of things, in fact, moved over there. But Mikasa, they made their brand in America with the imports, as opposed to going through another importer, which was smart. These are left in, but they're the anniversary, and people just don't buy the anniversary stuff. Hawaii, this is going to be plastic, but I'll bet this is Coco Joe's. And it is, you can't really see it underneath. It's not a tremendously inspired piece, but it is Hawaiian. And I think I'll go ahead and get it for 99 cents. The blend of island woods, it's essentially like Sirocco wood. They also did little figures using ground and reconstituted lava. And since we're on this theme, well, there's something loud and garish from a seacoast environment. Underneath it, however, is a nice old-fashioned piece. Transfer wear in the middle and an airbrushed luster wear pattern on the edges, so that's going to be 1920s. And this one has a German mark on it. This is also an old pattern. This is Johnson Brothers. This is English China from before the Second World War. I don't know the pattern name. I haven't seen a lot of this. I don't know if there's much of a demand. If there is, then the casserole dish would be something. Of course, lots of clothes. Don't see anything really old in housewares or anything other than these little Tupperware pie keepers, which I think were pretty common in the 70s. And they're not a big dollar number now. We're going back into the back room, which is furniture. They've got a little bit more furniture than Goodwill did. Another desk. Desks seem to be sitting again now that people are going back to their regular work. Old Kimball organ, another hard sell, along with a blessedly small size piano. This one actually would be movable because it's a spinet piano, so they have a better chance of selling this these days than they do of a big upright piano. But they're a tough sell nonetheless. Glissando. That's all I know how to do. Well, these are marks sold. 
they were only two dollars each. What a deal. We see a lot of these in Kentucky. I think a lot of schools are consolidating. Oh, this sounds like holidays at my family's house. <laughs> no, actually, we don't do a lot of that. There's Isaac Hayes again for the sake of love. He's everywhere around here. Yeah, there might be resale potential in that because it's Crooks and that's a decent brand. But it's ten dollars already. What does it seem to go for? Yeah, so you could double your money, which isn't terrible. But I don't know that I really need to chase $10 when there's so many other things that I've already got to sell. Yeah, now you're seeing why you see these in every thrift store everywhere because there were lots of these snack sets made back in the 60s. And this one's vintage, which is supposed to vaguely be based on grapes. Anchor Hawking. Sometimes they're really cool. I've got a set that's swirled that's got purple trays and a nice swirled effect. And, you know, it was the era where people were having house parties and so you could walk around and have a little bit of a nosh and a cup of coffee and conversation. Nothing vintage here. Just dirty from having them open and something falling onto it. Yeah. But it's new otherwise. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I guess people just don't want to throw out their old coffee machine if they break one of these. Seems like you could get a whole coffee machine for what they're paying for the replacement part. And it went for two for 15, three for, yeah, 35, right? That's a lot of it is in the shipping. That's the problem. That's why I don't kind of really want to monkey with it, but it is a great deal for $1.99. Somebody would make money. Early 1960s T-Bird convertible in a hot red color. That is fun. It's sitting outside of Bob's muffler. And they better hope it doesn't rain because they've got the top down. But that is a very pretty car in really wonderful condition with big wide white walls. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.